Like you told me that eight houses from here. And I open invitation. He can come on whenever he wants because he's as good as they get. And uh I Ooh. like all right, what are your five favorite SNL sketches? He's like, I don't I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. Matt. I literally goes, I don't know. And then he goes, Did you ever see Head Wound Harry? That was a funny sketch. <laughs> I go, top five all time? He goes, No, I just thought of it. <laughs> and then he's like, and then his way of deflecting was Jeez. telling me how great my memory is. God. <laughs> but I realized after the fact, like, that was just his way of not answering anything. Like, right. God, your memory's so amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, I was on Saturday Night Live. It's kind of memorable. Right. I worked with Chris Farley, and I remember when I met him, he fake vomited in my lap and then made believe he was blowing me in front of everyone in the room. And I'm just in, like, one of those giant couches where you sink into the couch. And Jim Downey goes, hey, Chris, say hi to Jay Moore. He's the new guy. How are you, young fella? And then he trips and goes, Bleh! and pukes, like, on my package, on my no jeans. No way. Not puke, like, fakes no, I it. I know, I know, right. And goes, Bleh! and he looks up, and his glasses are crooked, and he goes, sorry about that, young man. And then he just goes down and just, like, fake blows me. For minutes. Oh, my God. Minutes. And I look up, and it's like Sarah Silverman. Oh, my Dave God. Dave Mandel. And like, everybody. And then finally, like, uh, Spade, who's like an older brother to him, goes, nah, Stop it, Chris. Yeah. Farley. <laughs> Fucking knock it off. And he goes, Sorry, David. Jeez. Like, they were just like this weird It was always couple. like that? Like, yes. never not like that? That was, that was the thing with him. He I, couldn't stop, ever. Oh, my God. It was the best. But I remember it, because it happened. Did you party with Chris a lot? He was never partying the two years I was there. He was not. I was partying. He was completely. He didn't party at Saturday Night Live then. He, he, I believe he partied at Saturday Night Live the two years I was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. He was really working the steps. He was in the program, and he explained my addictions are like three columns, like drugs, uh food and alcohol and if i push like two columns down one gets higher uh, i push that one down the other two like that's that, interesting yeah so i guess i worked with him i don't know maybe food i don't know but he was sober and with it and beautiful and God, awesome amazing i met i met him once at the viper room and i was with a buddy of mine who who knew chris and he came over and he goes hey man really nice to meet you dude and this is before sugar ray it was like 96 you know we hadn't hit we hit 97 when you were still shrinky dinks still shrinky no we still were sugar ray then we were okay. we had been sugar ray 94 we changed to sugar ray uh and he comes with he goes hey man really nice to meet you i i, I really liked your last movie man it was great and, <laughs> and yeah and he goes it was awesome and you know i if, yeah, i live in new york and he was speaking very Can we like, guess who we thought you were don't say it Go ahead, Ethan Hawke. End of story. Okay. And then I went, Chris. I, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to insult you. I'm not, I'm not Ethan Hawke. You know, I'm Mark. Pleasure. He goes, Yeah, you are, man. Like, you know, it's, and, he, and he actually got like mad, thinking I was blowing him off as Ethan Hawke. And, and, and he, it was almost like a little bit like hurt. You know what I mean? He goes, Yeah, you are, man. You know, he was kind of like the Chris Farley show. Yeah, and he was, Yeah, you are, man. Like, and he kind of like just kind of like was hurt and walked Shut away. Shut up, Ethan. Like, no, really, like yeah. that, but like not in any com- comedic sense. You should have went, I'm Ethan Souple. I'm not even. <laughs> I remember once. I'm, I'm an enormous Scientologist <laughs> named Ethan Suplet. He's, he's lost some weight now, though. I know. He lost but some back then. Yes, back then. But, uh. Big as a house. And I saw Ethan Hawk, poor guy. He just got, a he got, giant. He was giant. Giant man. Giant. Just a giant, giant. A great big fat person. Who was that? Wild the, Bill. Science of the Lambs. Nice. <laughs> great. Did you, would, would you? Dude, yeah. That's all Anthony Cumia from Obi and Anthony. It's the best. Does, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Such a weird fucking movie. What's, uh, what's your newest impression, Jay? Like your newest. Ina from the Food Network, maybe? I don't know that. Don't tell Jeffrey. Look at this. You make a chicken and a man shows up. It's, it's nonsense. <laughs> Sounds funny. Don't tell me. Don't get me started on my omelet party. Watch the Food Network. You'll see it. The Barefoot Contessa. She got in a lot of hot water because she blew some Make-A-Wish kid off. Oh, really? So not only is he dying, but he's obviously gay because his last wish is to <laughs> hang out with the Barefoot Contessa on the Food Network. So, like, the kids had a rough ho- road to hoe. Yes. Like, I go out of my way. Like, I'm, I wish I had more gay fans so I could show them with my mouth how much I enjoy them. <laughs> but this poor kid's dying on death's door and the Make-A-Wish Foundation puts a doorstop right on that door wow. and goes, here she is. And she goes, I don't have, you know, she, and her, her comments were like, how do you know this? It was news. It was like a new, you're off extra, dude. You would have known it really too. Am. Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, Barefoot Contessa <laughs> yeah. says no. To, I like Barry Sobel used to do a bit about. What happened to fucking Barry Sobel, dude? 
I used to see that guy Jones every night, and we hung out, and he was great, and he was funny, and yeah. I would see him 10 years. Avenger the Nerds 2, he was in the White Castle uniform. He was kind of a Beastie Boy comic. I'm not the Beastie Boys or run DMC. DMC. He, he was great. He helped me a lot. Did he really? Yeah, he really did. Was he, your intro into Hollywood, Barry? No, no, no. Just in the road, like, he'd need opening up. He, you know, you bring your own opening Yeah, yeah. And we just that's a good we show. Did the road you too, man. for like three years. It was great. But what is he, he doing today? I don't know. He was very, 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 very one of the most ever of my eyes that I've ever seen. Difficult people to work with. No kidding. Like when you're pulling rank with a comedy club in Cleveland, like you know what? Save that battle for a network, bro. Yeah, right. Like, and I remember one. Right. You're not even headlining. He was headlining. Oh, he was headlining. Yeah, he he was a huge draw, and he was on two two seven, so he had huge black audiences too. Yeah, and black audiences are the greatest. Like they come out. Yeah, they like they, they show up. They get involved, suited, right? and yeah. booted. Now They're they, ready. They go out to have fun. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. And so every show was always packed because you had the overflow of the people that don't normally don't go to that club. Right, like, right. This urban market that would just pile in. Oh, that Barry's over from two two seven. Are you Tracy Morgan? Yeah, <laughs> I got Barry Sobel pregnant. <laughs> was and, that your and Marvin you? Hamlish came out. Yeah. Yeah. It don't have to make sense. That's why it's fun to do, Mark. <laughs> That's Mark McGrath. He was in that band Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> <laughs> he had sex with Fergie and Will I Am came out of ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's on Wikipedia. God damn it. You ain't Doug Flutie. <laughs> we might have had a good podcast if you didn't try to be goddamn Doug Flutie. <laughs> Look at the game tape. You ain't Doug Flutie, <laughs> goddammit. You got to get him on the pod, dude. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Yeah, I want right? Russell Brand. I want <laughs> Tracy. They all go to fucking Marin's. What if De Niro said, I'll come to your... Would you do it? You know how hard he is? No, I would it? turn him down. I heard, he, I heard Of course. <laughs> kidding. But uh, you know... Right. So, how, so how about Harrison Ford came here? There's really no one we turn away, Mark. But Harrison Ford is the most difficult interview in the history of show business. I heard he smokes pot every day, lokes every day, and dogs bitches with his homie, Dr. Dre. So I think <laughs> if we could just puff, puff, get... Cohen takes him out to the Bolt or Volt, whatever fucking... Oh, did you... All right. I had you in some super eco-friendly vehicle. <laughs> his, with a little leaf on the side. Yeah, totally. Like, you know, maybe I would buy one if it didn't say fucking F-cell across the door like I'm the pace car at Indy. Like, maybe we can keep my electricity on the down low, company. Yeah, Holy right. shit. Hybrid coming through. <laughs> well, like, why not just put a fucking Sunoco sticker on the hood? You know what I mean? This podcast really is the NASCAR car. The NASCAR car. A podcast because we're constantly trolling for sponsors. We got Amazon now. That's awesome. And it is awesome because people, if they go to jmore.com, they click on the Amazon link and they can buy whatever they want. So instead of me going like, buy this. Right. Instead, it's like, buy old Sugar Ray concert footage on Amazon. Off the J. Moore website. Go to jmore.com, go to Amazon, and then we get a piece. Cohen, his salary, he makes like 50 Gs a week, this kid. Does it really? It was podcast, but uh, you know what? I may, I'm, I'm way off. 40. 40 grand a week, Mark Cohen, to produce the podcast. That's tough. I mean, people can't afford him anymore. It's unbelievable. He's pricing himself out of the gig. How many do you do a week? He's not on mic, so this is a bad road to go down. Good point. Uh, he I should does, know that as a broadcast. He does many, and he's got his own, which is good, bagged and boarded, and it's camel toed on, um, on Twitter. And you can go buy anything you want. Go to jmore.com. Click the Amazon link and then just buy anything. You want Ninja Throwing Stars? That's what Brandon Walsh wants. <laughs> buy that. <laughs> go to Amazon for what? What do you go for? Books? Books. I do a lot of books on that, that baby. So just next time you go, go to my website. I will. And you can help me retread the elliptical. I would love that. Wear that shit out, money. So the Kardashians got is... famous for fucking Ray J. Well, Let's... So Paris did too, though. You know, she started uh, You know, she started that whole world. But she, she's an heiress at least. Like, there was a market for her, I'd like to think, not like to think, I would think there was a market for her just being Paris Hilton. Only because she facilitated that by being such a party chick, you know, having right. this heiress. So, like, sort of had a, a, not a skill or a talent, but she had an angle at least. Liza Minnelli was going to be famous if she never picked up a mic this Yes. Same. Good point. Because of her parents. And she made the parties. Yes. Good point. You know what I mean? Yes. You're like, right. Lizzie Grubman isn't on any show. Mm -hmm. And she's, we, she's famous because she's a socialite. She's a publicist. She works hard. You right. Know? But that's, there was, there's a market for that person. Right. 
You know, absolutely. And in different, there's the da- any town you go to on the road, there's Dallas. There's that magazine yep. where you just see everybody at a party, and you're like, "Who the fuck are these famous Dallas people?" Exactly. It's funny. It's little eco subcultures of fame. Each Santa city. Barbara. <laughs> they all came out. Seven one four. Right. Yeah, they all come out, and you're like, they're all there. But do you think there's a Robert Kardashian Kardashian element to the Kardashian success? Uh, maybe. I mean, we don't know because Barry Sheck doesn't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would like to think that Zito, Christopher, Christopher Darden's kids could probably get a show. And then Marsha Hoosieromp got her Marcia own show, Clark right? Clark and Mark Furman, uh, you know, uh, if he had Furman's kids, out in Idaho, uh, man, getting his militia on it. He solved like a crazy crime. Yeah. What was the one? Cohen will know this. Everyone's going to hashtag the shit out of yeah. <laughs> I got to look this up on Twitter. Tell me, Sugar Ray, 1994, why did you change your name? Was it a problem because Shrinky Dinks was an actual That's product? Right. It was actually a trademarked, licensed product. So even they, though you spelt it differently. Even though we spelt it differently. They call, we got a record deal in 94. And, uh, All right, with Atlantic, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you as we go. Yes, sir. Because I want to – these are things I know people want to know. Yeah. You and your buddies – from Newport Beach? That's right. Newport Beach, California. You play in a band, and it was that Long Beach, like we're all, everyone kind of crested in on this wave. Sublime was in on it. No Doubt was in on Sublime, it. Sublime, by the way, I think would have been one of the best bands of all time. Oh, without a doubt. Like, I still listen to that and go, you asshole. Right. But he was- Fucking he, junky asshole. But he couldn't live, though. So it, it did what it was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was such an unconventional guy, Brad. Like, he just didn't show up on it's time. It's Jay, but go ahead. I, his name was Brad. I know. I was, oh. play really? Along. I mean, come on. You know, I have a hard time getting <laughs> thoughts together, and you just just. Throw so it. he was was he like super addict? Just he, he no he would they'd have yeah he was he'd have a gig and he just wouldn't show up half the time you oh. know they go sublime playing tonight at the you know local you know Long Beach bar and you would just go oh, I don't I don't know you, you want to take a chance they might show up you know what I mean it was that kind of unconventionality that that made him great and made him impossible you know it's he, heroin seems to be the the drug of he may not show up. Yeah, no, it really, it, you got a lot Booze of Booze to a lesser extent. Coke people, fucking sound check right on time. I don't know. I disagree though. Coke can make you not show up. Like but Coke had, hangover, pass out, you know what I mean? But if you had to rank them. Of not showing up? Coke guy, you get manic and you're like, fucking sound check, dude. Let's go do fucking sound check, sound check. You want to do sound check? That's a beautiful room, man. Go, go to Kuzi right. Coke. A Coke guy can always get him where he needs to be to go do something. You can just do an, you know, another line of Coke. You just point him. Right. And just, you know, do what you need to do. Booze guy. Booze guy doesn't show up, but heroin guy is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he solved the murder, uh, Skakel. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Kennedy. Yeah, he, he solved that. In, from Idaho. From Idaho. He, uh. Um, Mark Furman said, you know what? Uh, fuck it. I'll do something else. Skakel is a Kennedy relative, killed, uh, a, a 16 year old, uh, girl about so, 30 years ago. Yeah, and he cold, dug it. the coldest of, you know, uh, Catherine Morris couldn't crack this one. Yeah, no, blue blood killing, and then, you know, Furman gets involved in Idaho and solves it. I think he did a good job on Oprah. Did you see him? I didn't see him on Oprah, but I don't know, man, Furman. Dude. She said, what would you ask him? And he said, what would you ask OJ? And he said, I would tell him, I know you did not go there to kill them. I know something got out of hand. Like, he was... Like, he obviously sleeps with this every night Absolutely. of his life. Wow. Like, I know you didn't go there to kill anybody. Right, right. And I know there might have been another person. Because like, that just, was a crime of straight passion. Like, yeah, like, you know. he, he cut their heads off and cut yeah. out her boob yeah. implants and stuff. Jesus like, just stuff, Christ. whatever. So Whatever. That's hardcore. No, because I want to talk. <laughs> no. That's the most interesting thing yet. No. <laughs> no, like, you know, it's just, I mean, it's 19, it's so 1990. I know, but it's still amazing and it's still relevant. Uh, but it's the Kardashian what's thing. What's amazing to me is that he solved the Skakel murder. Well, the OJ thing is probably around the corner for him. You think that guy's not working that at nightly still? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you said, it keeps him up at night. What is the thing I'm missing here? You know what I mean? Hear Norm McDonald's bit about OJ going to jail for stealing his own clothing? No, I didn't. He goes, oh, you know, there's a pecking order in jail. <laughs> Murderers, to the best of my knowledge, get the most respect in jail. They're feared and they're to be uh, respected, you know? Way down. I think child molesters are the worst. Rapists are bad. And I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure way down, guys that steal their own clothing <laughs> is probably way down on the list. So he's probably in jail going, oh, my God. You should have just put me in here for killing those people, you know? Yeah. I get much more respect uh, instead of s- stealing my own laundry back. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got to look over my shoulder. What, the H? 
God so damn, Shrinky Dinks becomes too. That's so good. Shrinky Dinks. Becomes, oh, you're funny anyway, but when you have the impression to go along, it's fucking phenomenal. I gotta get new ones. I'm trying. You just had the, the barefoot Contessa, right? I, I just need certain people to get more famous. Got it. Yeah. I hear Colin you. Quinn's stupid Broadway show. If that got God, your Colin run, Quinn is fucking ridiculous. All right, you know. <laughs> That's good, you know. You got the guy from Sugar Ray on. He's got a tattoo of a Rolex on his ribcage, and you somehow digress into the Skakel murder. 